the reason I want to bring up Charlie Hebdo today is because it's in the news. And the reason it's in the news is that um, five and a half years after the attack on Charlie Hebdo, and I'll remind you that in uh, January of 2015, uh, Islamic terrorists attacked the officers of Charlie Hebdo, two gunmen attacked the officers um, in the name of Islam, in the name of defending the honor of the prophet Muhammad. And they slaughtered, slaughtered uh, 12 people who were working there on that day. Charlie Hebdo is a satirical magazine uh, that has been published kind of on and off since the, uh, since the 1970s uh, and uh, had published various cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad, had done satirical articles about him, but also had done the same thing, made fun of Jews, made fun of uh, Christians, made fun of pretty much everybody. But I don't know if you know, but in Islam, making fun of the prophet, drawing the prophet, is sinful. And it's a sin that's potentially punishable by death. And these two Islamists took it upon themselves to bring death to the cartoonists and to the publisher of Charlie Hebdo. Um, now, I wanted to show you the, some cartoons. Uh, let's see, where was that? Over here. All right, this is, so this is the cartoon that Charlie Hebdo published in 2011. And uh, in the, in the uh, bubble there, what you see is uh, Muhammad is saying, a hundred lashes if you don't die laughing. A hundred lashes if you don't die laughing. For publishing this cartoon, 12 people lost their lives. Sadly, whoops, oh, I have to do here. Whoops. This is the cartoon that the magazine put out a week after the slaughter, a week after the terrorist attack. And this says, and this is horrible. This is horrible. We forgive you, or you are forgiven. To S. Pardon, I don't know. I shouldn't speak French. These, and I'm not, I, I don't have large images of this and I can't. These are some of the cartoons that were published in 2005 in Denmark. These are the famous Danish cartoons that were published. You see this one in particular, the one in the middle with a black turban and a bomb in it was particularly viewed in the city. But think about it. Muhammad with a bomb? Is that so weird, given all the suicide bombers that have been happening? So I just wanted to show those for reason, not because you need to see cartoons of Muhammad, but because right after Charlie Hebdo happened, millions of people went out to the streets, and everybody on Twitter said, Je suis Charlie. I am Charlie. In support of Charlie Hebdo, the magazine. And yet, I mean, New York Times was just with Charlie. The, ma many publications in the U.S. was just with Charlie. And yet, none of these publications had the balls. None of these publications had the audacity, the courage, really, not the audacity, the courage, to publish the cartoons. People were slaughtered about cartoons. The nature of those cartoons is news. It is their moral responsibility to show those cartoons and not succumb to fear, not succumb to the threats of the Islamists by not showing them. It is horrific, horrific, that nobody who said, Je suis Charlie, was willing to show the cartoons. It means that they're not Charlie. They were not Je suis Charlie. They were cowards. They were compromisers. They were appeasers. And I wanted to show the Charlie, the, the Muhammad cartoons because yes, we Charlie, because I stand with those people who in my view, this is a battle about free speech. This is not a battle about Islam. This is not a battle about Muhammad. 
That's a different battle. There is a battle there too. This one is about free speech. And if you feel fear to publish the cartoons and your government won't defend you for publishing the cartoons, that is a violation of free speech. The government not protecting you. And unfortunately, the U.S. government has a long history of this, which I've recited in the past, but what the hell, let's do it again. When Salman Rushdie published his book and there was a fatwa against him by the leader of Iraq, by Ayatollah Khomeini, a fatwa, you know, gave a prize to somebody, anybody who killed him. The United States did nothing. The United Kingdom, where Solomon Rushdie was hiding, did nothing. Oh, you say, well, Solomon Rushdie wasn't an American, so it's not the job of the American government to do anything. Okay. But what about the threats of the Ayatollah Khomeini towards our publishers? If they published the book, they would be killed. The firebombing of bookstores in New York. Our government did nothing. Indeed, George H.W., the father, Bush, came out and said, you really shouldn't insult Islam. It's not nice. People shouldn't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. In other words, appeasement, compromise, cowardice, instead of living up to your responsibility to protect the right of people to insult, including to insult Islam. There were many examples after that of self-censorship, of people refusing to show because they were afraid and they knew their government would not protect them all over the West, including in the United States of America. And in 2005, in order to illustrate this self-censorship, in order to bring the topic to the forefront, Fleming Rose, who was an editor at a Danish journal, published 12 cartoons of Muhammad. Now, Fleming has become a good friend since then. Well, a friend, anyway. <laughs> I think he's a good friend. I don't see him very often, but, but he is a good friend. Fleming published those cartoons. The response was immediate. Not immediate. It took a few months. But riled up in the Muslim world. You got demonstrations all over the Muslim world. The burning of the attacks on embassies. The killing of people. Threats on Fleming Rose's life. Threats on the cartoonist's life. Cartoonists were actually attacked and almost killed. No American publication agreed to publish the cartoons. Yes, Fleming Rose was an Ocon at my invitation. As I said, Fleming became a good friend. He's a, he's a fan of Ayn Rand. He's, no, he's not an objectivist, but he's a fan of Ayn Rand. He's read out the shrugged. He's just a good guy. One of these pro-reason, probably moderately on the left on economic issues, but just a good guy. George Bush, son this time, came out and said, oh, we shouldn't really publish these cartoons. Why do we need to offend Muslims? Why should we offend people? This is George Bush, the tough George Bush, the cowboy. In 2012, Charlie Hebdo, published some cartoons of Muhammad in the nude. The White House under Obama actually said, you know, we shouldn't really offend them. Basically, the West has been sending a single signal to Islam that, yeah, we agree with you. These publications, these individuals, it's too much. Indeed, ultimately, Fleming Rose had to leave his publication in Denmark because they wouldn't fully support him. Even the publication wouldn't fully support him in defending his decision to publish those cartoons and to continue making an issue of it. Indeed, over the last 20 years, free speech has declined significantly in Europe, not in the self-censorship way it's declined in the United States, but much more from the perspective, much more in Europe, because of governments, governments imposing hate speech laws, government requiring institutions to 
take down paintings of Muhammad or not to show operas that might depict Muhammad or not. Basically, massive appeasement across the board from government on down towards Islam and towards the worst elements within Islam. So over the next few months, France is going to have a show trial. They are trying 14 people who were accused of helping the people who committed the murders in January 2015. The actual shooters were killed then, uh, the day after, I think, by the French authorities. Three other people who helped them directly escaped France and made it to ISIS. They're probably still in Syria, Iraq, or they might be and might, probably are dead, killed during the struggles over there. These 14, or I think three are in abstentia, the three that are in Iraq or Syria, part of ISIS. The others are people that are, weren't major helpers, but helped in these attacks. But this is an opportunity for the French justice system to put the whole issue of Charlie Hebdo, the whole issue of free speech on the table. These will be the first trials in French history that will be broadcast to the public, where video cameras are allowed. So these are going to be two show trials in the sense that the whole French public is going to be invited to participate. And I hope, I hope that they use this opportunity to strengthen the idea of free speech, to strengthen the right of Charlie Hebdo to publish any cartoons, of anybody to publish any cartoons, that unless you incite for violence to say anything, particularly in France, where free speech is under constant attack, particularly in Europe, where free speech is massively in decline. But it'd be good for Americans too, as we limit people's speech online, not by the government, but by internet companies that shouldn't be doing it. I don't think they should be broken up for it. They have every right to do it. But I think they're wrong in doing it. And certainly they're wrong in not having criteria, objective criteria for what they're doing. But it is also an important lesson for all of us to learn because the government is not that far. Whether it's Trump or the Democrats. From coming out and restricting free speech. From slowly chipping away at free speech. For example, regulating Facebook and Twitter on what they can and cannot put up on their platforms would be regulating free speech in America. We are there. We are close to there. There's talk about hate speech laws. We need to pay attention, America. I know this is not on anybody's top of anybody's agenda, but we need to pay attention. This is a crucial issue. This is an issue of life or death. And if we need to be reminded through this trial of what's at stake, then we should be reminded. Then let's take this opportunity and remind ourselves. There's nothing more important to civilization right now than the ability to speak, than my ability to do the show, my ability to show, the, show these cartoons. And I hope YouTube doesn't take this show down. I'm sure it won't monetize it. But let's hope that you can still show the cartoons on YouTube without YouTube, um, you know, stopping us. Restricting us. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair cynicism and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. 
But but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see I want to see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a click of a, a thing. Whether you're looking at this, uh, and and you know the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at youronbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.